This video clip is about Chapter 1, Section 2, um, using segments and congruence. So as mentioned in the previous video, a postulate or axiom is a rule that, that is accepted without proof. A theorem, however, is a rule that can be proved using definitions, postulates, axioms, corollaries, and other theorems. So we need to begin building the foundation with our postulates and our definitions so that we can work with theorems. The ruler postulate is pretty simple. Points on a line, such as S and T, can be matched one to one. So for every point, it corresponds with one number. So points on a line can be matched one to one with the real numbers called coordinates. And we should recall that the distance between points is always going to be positive. So right now, S is located at 2 centimeters and T is located about 5.5 centimeters. So that might even be 5.4. So the distance between T and S is the difference between those points. So easily enough, it's 3.5 or a little closer would probably be 3.4. I want you to look at this picture at the slide and look at these two pictures and decide what is the same yet what is different about 1 and 2. So you should pause the video for I don't maybe 30 seconds and jot down what you notice that the difference is between these two pictures and I would like us to share those experiences in class tomorrow. Okay, now that you restarted the video and you're, you've jot down some ideas, we notice that one and two both contain segments. One of them has segment SN and the other is segment RY. And we'll see, hopefully my pen is going to show up on the screen here in just a second. So we notice that there are um, three points for each picture, two endpoints, and then another point that is kind of floating around. And if we look at one, we notice that U is in the middle and there are these little symbols that indicate that we have segments that are of the same length or that are congruent. Okay, so if we look here and here, these little hash marks. So U would be considered a midpoint. And there's only one and only one midpoint in a segment. However, in line two, A is just a point that's between. So there are a finite number of points that are between R and Y, but there's clearly more than just A. All right, so the segment addition postulate is telling us if B is between points A and C, then AB plus BC equals AC. So we have A and C as our endpoints, and B is just somewhere in between. Notice we're not saying that it's in the middle, just somewhere. You could put it to the left, to the right, just avoid the middle for any confusion. So the length of AB plus the length of BC is equal to the length of AC. Okay, very straightforward, very simple. This is known as the segment addition postulate, which you will start seeing me abbreviate as SAP. Let's talk about what it means to have congruent segments. Or we'll hold on a second. I apologize for the technicality um, or the technical mistake. So the congruent segments are segments which are going to be equal in length. Okay, segments that have the same length. So we need to focus on notation and right now with the notation if we want to say that the length of segment AB is equal to the length of segment, a, of segment CD then we drop the segment symbol above AB and CD and we use an equal sign. So anytime we're talking about length and measurement and numbers, this is the notation you'll be using. We could say that the segments are congruent. 
So if we say that this, that segment AB is congruent to segment CD, we use our segment symbols as we learned in the beginning, but then we use what's called a congruent symbol. Notice the little squiggly line above the equal sign. Okay, so pay attention to the types of notation that we're using and please jot down any notes if you have any questions for class. All right, so we have a, a real world example here, pretty straightforward on how the segment addition postulate is used. We say um, that Lubbock, Texas, if I'm saying that correctly, is located at point L and St. Louis, Missouri is located at point S and Tulsa is somewhere between Lubbock and St. Louis, almost in the middle, but not quite. So the segment addition postulate tells us that the length of segment LT plus the length of segment TS would be equal to the length of segment LS. So by doing a little bit of substitution, we would have 380 miles plus 360 miles to give us the length of LS. And that's going to give us 740 miles from Lubbock to St. Louis. So very straightforward. Let's work a little bit more with the segment addition postulate, but let's work with our algebra. So we say B is between A and C. So point A and C are the endpoints of the segment. B is somewhere in between, so we're going to keep that away from the center. And now we're going to start labeling. AB is 2, AC is 7, so we do not know BC. Please always start, no matter how tedious it may seem, with the segment addition postulate, which would say AB plus BC is equal to AC. And I'm sure you all have the answer already, but we want to go through the proper process. So that would be because we use the segment addition postulate. We're going to justify each of our steps to give us ready for theorems. Um, substitution would allow 2 plus x to be equal to 7. Never abbreviate substitution because it could be confused with subtraction. And then our next step by the subtraction property we are going to subtract our 2 and get a 5. So very easily, I'm sure you guys did that at mental math. So what happens if B is between A and C and we have some algebra? Let's make sure we can brush up on our algebra. And we know B is somewhere in here. AC is 23. AB is x plus 1. BC is 3x minus 2. Again, starting with the segment addition postulate, we write AB plus BC is AC. We do some substitution. And feel free to go through this video at your own pace. Uh, that was by substitution. Now we're going to combine like terms. All right, so combining like terms, we're going to wind up getting 4x minus 1 is 23. And we say we're simplifying. That's our justification. We are going to add our 1 to the other side. And now we are going to divide. So once we have that set, we can go up and we say, OK, we believe that x is going to be 6, but we should check and we also need to solve for BC. So let's start. AB would be 6 plus 1, which is 7. BC would be 3 times 6 plus, I'm sorry, minus 2, which is going to give us 18 minus 2 is 16. And if we look, AB plus BC is 23, like we wanted, so we're in good shape. So we can say that BC is 16. Now what happens if we have a point that's a midpoint? So a midpoint divides a segment into two congruent parts. Okay, so those parts are going to become equal in length. So C is the midpoint of AB. So be careful to read the problem. 
don't assume it's going to be alphabetical. And we always, always, always need to put these hash marks in to prove that we know C is a midpoint. So C, AC is 3x plus 5, CB is 2x plus 13. So if we notice, we don't have three pieces of information like the last two examples. But what we do know is that these segments, which we know to be congruent, translates that they have equal length. All right, so we know that AC equals CB, so substitution, and we'll subtract 2x to the other side, and then we will subtract the 5 to the other side, and feel free to do a couple steps at once if you would like. So we get that x is 8, and again, for good measure, we need to double check everything. So by substitution, AC is 29. If we did this correctly, CB is also going to be 29. Correct? And so that the length of AB is going to be 2 times 29, which is 58. So we have 8 and 58. Okay, on to four. So as we go through midpoint problems, you're going to notice that depending on the information we get, um, the problems may be set up slightly different, but all with the segment addition postulate in mind. So we have B is the midpoint of AC, and hash marks. And I will require you to write this out every time and to label everything every time. All right, so this time we know a part and a whole rather than the two equal parts. All right, so with the part and the whole, the segment addition postulate tells us AB plus BC, so AB plus BC is equal to AC. Well, I know that AB is equal to the length of BC. Right, we know AB is equal to BC. So we could put a little substitution and say AB plus another AB is equal to AC. Simplifying tells us two ABs are equal to AC. So you will be allowed to start the problem right here, but I'm trying to prove to you why we can write this. So from this point, we do a little substitution, and we say 2 times 4x minus 1 is equal to 10x minus 20. The distributive property tells us that 8x minus 2 is equal to 10x minus 20. Subtract the 8x to the other side. Add the 20 so that the left side becomes 18 is equal to 2x, and we know by division x is equal to 9. We do some substitution, and we say ab is equal to 4 times 9 minus 1, which is 35. ac is equal to 10 times 9 minus 20, which is 70. Good measure, because ab times 2 gives us 70, so we have a checkpoint and we can make sure we fill in our final answers. Um, I would suggest that once we do the substitution, you pause the video, brush up on your algebra, see if you're able to solve everything completely, and then finish watching it to know that you're in the right spot. So let's take a look at one more. Okay, so I want you to pause the video, set this problem up, um, and then go ahead, and if you get it correctly, um, start the video again. Okay, so we have AB plus BC is AC. 2 thirds X plus 3 plus X plus 5 is equal to 2X plus 2. Algebra trick, multiply everything by the denominator so that we have 2X plus 9 plus 3X plus 15 is equal to 6X plus 6. Finishing out, go through everything, and um, we're a little short on time, so I'm going to just tell you x equals 18, and that you should get bc is equal to 23. The next screen is going to hold a couple questions for you, so please pause and write down these problems to solve in class.